Genesis 7. Then God said to Noah, Go into the ark and your whole family, because I found you righteous in this generation. Uh huh. Keep that in mind when you think about the things he does later, uh, what Noah does. Take with you seven pairs of every uh, kind of clean animal, and a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female. Okay, yeah, yeah. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe, out, wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Again, he's got to punish those baby seals. You know, those puppies. He literally, uh, got of the Old Testament is the, the drowner of puppies. I want you to think about that the next time you see a litter of puppies just playing around. That, that he's like a man who came by and literally took each one of them and drowned each one. One at a time, just drowned each of them. Every puppy. Because the humans around them were bad in his sight. And yet, he's not bad. Verse 5, And Noah did all that God commanded him. Let me see if I got any notes yet. Oh, I just, I make a note that for verse 4 and 19... Even if every ice cap was melted, there's still not enough water in the world to flood the whole world. Yep. Okay. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and... You know, wouldn't it have been easier to just... This is new. Wouldn't it be easier to just tell Noah to head towards, like, the mountains? Some high point on the mountains, and then only flood up to that point? I'm just making sense of this. I mean, anyway, verse eight, pairs of unclean or clean and unclean animals of birds and creatures that move along the ground, male and female came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after uh, the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. Okay. Got to kill them puppies. Chapter, I'm sorry, verse 11 in the 600th year of Noah's life and blah blah on the day of the springs the great deep was forth the floodgates of heaven the floodgates of the heavens were opened and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights so long for the insects too Ch uh, verse 13 on that very day Noah and his sons Shem Ham and Japheth together with his wife and his and the wives of his three sons entered the ark and they had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to blah, 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 pairs of all creatures that have breath of life, blah, blah, um, The animals were going in. It's, okay, here, here's something that's interesting. So the God of the Old Testament wants to save the animals of the Old Testament. Otherwise, he would not have gone through the effort of having them all come to Noah. But he also wants to just wipe out the rest of the animals. It just seems... <laughs> again, a plague would have been way more efficient. It does the same thing without all this nonsense and drama. But again, they didn't know what plagues, how plagues worked or what they were. And that even a, an advanced... Even people nowadays can create a biological weapon that could do exactly what I'm talking about. And it, you don't even have to be God. You could just be an alien or modern day humans in a lab can develop a disease so it's not like this is a miracle verse 15 pairs of all the creatures yeah 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 and it says then the lord satan shut him in for verse 17 for 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth and as the waters increased they lifted the ark high above the earth in the dark and medieval ages or middle ages kings were out would build massive fleets with ships and they were always trying to be build bigger and more powerful ships they tried as best as they could to build just giant mega ships and they couldn't because wood alone was not enough to support the frame uh, it wasn't until we d uh, invented steel that we were able to build ships past a certain size and even then if it's not done right it can still collapse and so noah did not have steel Okay, and this is another one of those telltale signs that the whole thing is nonsense. The fact that he's sailing around in a ship that has been many times proven to not be possible. That wood alone could not have made the ship that he's sailing around in. 
I mean, there's a hundred different arguments, to, and all it takes is just one of them to literally make the whole Noah story just look like a giant lie, uh, the giant lie that it is. But that is definitely one of the easiest ones, is knowing that um, nobody has been able to recreate a wooden ship of this size that could actually float and not break apart. Well, here we are. And not only that, but this isn't just an empty ship. This is loaded full of stuff. Okay, <laughs> great. Great. That, that, wow. Okay, so... It says, uh, verse 17, lifted the ark above the earth. The waters rose, increased, increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. How it's floating is, is amazing, considering how much weight is supposedly on it. Uh, you know, 1.7 uh, million species of animals plus 40 days of food for each of them to live. Do you know how much crap you would have to be shoveling every day just to keep the crap from building up in the thing? Anyway, they rose greatly on the earth. And all the high mountains under the entire... See, okay. Those people who want to say it's a local flood, do not read their Bible. Right here, verse 19. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the uh, entire heavens were covered. All. Not some. Not one. All the high mountains. Meaning all of the highest mountains under the entire heavens that were created were covered. There is not enough world, uh, water in this world to do that. So this is, again, now into the uh, supernatural nonsense category. And it was not a local flood, according to the Bible. It was a global flood. It covered all the mountains. Verse 19. Genesis 7, chapter 7, verse 19. See, I like to hold people to their beliefs. Okay, people idolize the Old Testament. I, uh, to me, the Old Testament is mostly nonsense. It's just garbage, most of it. I mean, I like the story of Joseph, but most of this stuff, like in Genesis and Numbers and all stuff, is just total nonsense. And I like to hold people to their own belief. They say they believe something. They say they believe the Bible. They say they believe in the Old Testament. Okay, good. I'm going to hold you to it, okay? You want to say, oh, it was probably just a local flood. No, verse 19 says it was a global flood. Oh, it wasn't really six literal days. It was just six figurative. No, it was six literal days. You better believe everything you say you believe or go home. I hold people to their beliefs, Okay. They want to say they believe the Old Testament? They gotta believe all of it. Not parts of it, all of it. Okay? Verse 20. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. So they not only covered the mountains, but they were 15 cubits over the tops of those mountains. So that's what? Was that 30 or 45 feet or something like that? Over. The highest points of all the mountains. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that uh, swarm over the earth and all of mankind. Everything on dry land. Okay, and here's the thing. It's just the humans are just going to keep being evil and it's just going to keep going over. What You went through all this effort for what? You know? They're going to do it again. Maybe make them not so evil. How about that? And not, not so much in, the, in their image. Right? Verse 22. Everything on high land that had breath of life in its nostrils died. Oh, that's nice. That's very compassionate. Verse 23. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and creatures that moved along the ground and the birds were wiped out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him on the ark. Verse 24. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days. Wait, what? What? Oh, maybe it just means just flooded. I was going to say, I thought it was 40 days and 40 nights. I thought it was only 40 days, but now here it says, uh, 24, the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. So half a year of flooding. So I guess that, that must mean I'm giving them some slack here since they're already a sunk ship, so to speak. Uh, that must mean either before or after, but probably after. Let's see what I got in my notes here for this chapter. Chapter 7. Okay, so, yeah, in summary, uh, the story of Noah especially is a simple test of those who love the truth or not. Those who reject the obvious nonsense of the Noah story love the truth, reality, and those who hold, uh, hold to the story of Noah hate the truth and love their ancestors' lies. The God of the author who wrote Genesis is the father of lies is Satan. God, lowercase g, in quotes, goes through all this effort to save Noah's family to make the world a better place, 
only for it to fall apart again not long after they get off the ship. Yeah, I was just saying this. It's funny how I wrote these notes like three or four years ago, and it's and I'm, I'm only reading them again now after I've already given my some comments. It's amazing. <laughs> Still remember to make the same point. Yeah, so he kills the whole... Uh, let me finish. It says, The God of Genesis writers is not very good at planning at anything. Yeah, so, like I was just saying, they kill the whole world because it's evil, even the puppies. And then what's going to happen later? The world becomes evil again. I mean, just give it up. Make a better human that doesn't do evil. Isn't that a better thing for a divine being to do rather than continually making a bad human and then punishing them for it? it just, it's insane. Genesis chapter 8 now. Let's see what we got. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock uh, that were with him in the dark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Okay, so the wind made the water just go away. Not evaporation. Now, the wind somehow made that water go somewhere else. That's how they think that the world works. I need to make this a point because you're going to overlook this if you don't. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. I guess the wind is pushing the water out into space. And where is the wind coming from? I just want to... Did, did, did Gott fart on the earth with a mighty wind, and that wind pushed all the water out into space? I mean, that's literally what is being said right now, because there's no way a wind like that could just... First of all, there's never been that much water, or at least there's no reason to think there was. And second is uh, wind of, to push that much water out would, like I say, it would have to be like, oh man, that water would have to be going out into space. So anyway, verse two, now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of heaven had been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded. Oh, I do want to make a point. It's coming to mind. Jesus says that when he asked why that building collapsed he says do you think it was because they were sinners and he said no he said that the rain falls on the righteous and the wicked or you know the rain falls on on everybody and it had nothing to do with your sin well the got of the old testament says no it does absolutely if, if too many people sin enough he's gonna he's gonna kill everybody even though jesus literally contradicts that by saying that these kind of things this kind of disaster it happens to everybody it's not just because they were sinful or not that that uh, judgment is is seen in heaven, but on earth anything can happen to anybody, basically. But here we are in the Old Testament. They're talking about no, no, no. God is constantly punishing people for their sins. Um, that's why Jesus asked that. He had to make that point. That was a big issue in his culture in his time, as they thought that when bad things happen to people, it was because they sinned. Job even went through this. Job was constantly being accused of having done something sinful because of the bad things that were happening to him. So he, their culture was very much around the idea. It's because of this Genesis nonsense and his falsehood that Jesus puts to rest. Um, their culture believed that bad things happen to people because they were bad. And Jesus says, no, bad things happen to everybody. Rain falls on everybody. But apparently, according to the Genesis, no, rain only falls on everyone other than Noah's family. It falls on bad people, but doesn't fall on good people, according to the God of the Old Testament. According to the people who killed Jesus because they hated Jesus, Let's see here. Yeah, okay, I did guess right. It said the waters receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the 150 days, the waters were gone. Yeah, so the flooding was after, not before. Okay. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm right now thinking about other things, so I'm sorry. I'm, to, I'm thinking about how people were always looking for the ark, how they think they may have found a spot, but they don't really know, and they were starting to stretch it and say, well, if, if Moses wrote it and it was 515 feet, then that could have been the spot. And it's just like, basically, look, on the earth, you're going to find all kinds of strange indentations and marks and so on. You're going to you're gonna see this stuff. Get, if you travel enough terrain, you're going to see enough stuff. You see enough wild stuff, too. Giant stones that just move on their own. Or like when lightning hits sand, it makes these really, really crazy. You're just going to see all kinds of wild stuff if you, if you see them. So if you see like a giant, uh, what's, the, what's the name of a, a boat shape? It's like a, you know, it's, it's like a, a sphere, part sphere, part... 
like if you if a if a square and a sphere had sex and had a kid, it's like that. You know what I mean? It's like a. I, I know there's got to be a name for it, but I'm ignorant of what the name is. But you know what I'm talking about. It looks. Yeah, you know what I'm talking. No, not like a taco. I was thinking, what's what's a word though? Just, it's a taco. It's not a taco. You brain. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not a taco. A taco is. I guess maybe maybe put two tacos together, like two taco silhouettes. I don't. Anyway, so they found this like shape out in the mountains somewhere, and they said, "Oh, that's got to have been where the ark was." But here's the problem: this thing was made out of wood, which was why it wouldn't have worked anyway. But if it was made out of wood, and if this was six thousand years ago, there would be nothing left. There would be nothing left. There would be no crate. Why would there be a stone crater? Is strong is is wood stronger than stone? Does the rain around the wood cause the stone to shape differently? Is that what they're saying? Because I mean, there's no way there would be a stone crater that came from a wooden boat. Anyway, <laughs> just I can't sometimes, you know. But anyway, people have been trying to find the ark forever, and I think that's a futile uh, search because, like I said, if the thing was made out of wood, it's it's and it, for how long ago it was, you w I wouldn't expect to find anything anyway. Anyway, um, let's see, chapter eight, verse six. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark. Um, wow, it sounds like there was only one window. I guess if it's raining that hard, you would only want maybe one window. Oh man, can you imagine how rank that air is, right? All that animal crap. And sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until water had dried up from the earth. He sent out... Hey, wait, I better have more than two doves, because you know they didn't always come back. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground, but the dove could not find anywhere to perch because the water was all over the surface of the earth, so... Okay, I wanted to point something out here real quick. The fact that Noah is sending out the dove to check for land, why wouldn't God just tell him that it's safe? God, according to the story, told him that there was going to be like a flood a hundred years later. Told him how to build the ship. Told him everything Noah needed to survive. Why wouldn't he then tell Noah, okay, it's time now. You're safe. Why would Noah send doves out? Was this, are they not, is Noah not on speaking terms with God right now and he's just kind of doing it himself or just, you know, this is, I've never really thought about it till now. Why the doves? God has helped him supposedly with everything in the whole story up to this point. Why does Noah have to do, do this on his own now? Anyway. It returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand. And took the dove and brought it back into himself in the... Oh, I thought I was about to say in the dark. Yeah, for sure, in the dark. Uh, how did you have light in the dark? It's raining outside. There's only one window. And if you have fire on a wooden ship like that, burning up breathing air and oxygen, this is a... Oh, man, fire on a boat like this? Anyway, yeah, he brought it back to the ark, not the dark. Verse 10, he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening where he saw its beak was a uh, freshly plucked olive leaf. Okay, so the waters flooded everything and killed everything. Plant life too, by the way. Uh, the God of the Old Testament didn't know about that, about how plant life will die and not come back. And yet somehow after a couple days, there's an olive some, uh, plant somewhere. And the bird is bringing back an olive leaf from what should have been a drowned plant. All right. Even though it just got done saying that everything was covered with water. Even the highest points of the highest mountains were covered with water. So it wasn't like it was just there and it, it survived the whole... No. It had to have grown within a couple days after it had been drowned for 40 days. We know plants don't grow like this. Okay. Even people back in their time know that plants don't grow like this. So same people throughout a long time could know that this whole story is false. It's a fable, you know, so they have no excuse even back then. Verse 12, he waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. See, I'm sorry, right now my thoughts are kind of being invaded with, I guess I'll pause on this note because maybe an important lesson is being, uh, is coming to me right now. 
I think that this is why a reason why so many people do not believe in the existence of God because they have bought these lies or they, they for a time believe these lies and feel suckered, feel duped, fooled. And they're so angry sometimes that they people go in either two camps. It seems like they go further into the lie, further into delusion, or they go so far away from it and they just throw it all out. They throw the baby out with the bathwater. And so when it comes to dealing, and some of these people, you know, can be very nice people, and um, they still wonder about what happens after death, you know, they still hear about near-death experiences and so on, but they just don't know what to believe because they've, they've come across this nonsense. And this is one of the reasons why I'm finally doing these videos. I've, I've had it. I've just, I've had it with this, these lies. The problem is that everything you read about in the Bible is through the words chosen by those who scribed it, over generation, over generation, over generation, they chose what words to use. You could have used this word or that word, but they chose to put down the word that they did. They chose the words, they chose what to include, they chose what seemed like scripture or what wasn't scripture. They chose, they made all the choices, they shaped everything that you read. Now keep that in mind when you, when you read the Old Testament, like Genesis and so on. They chose this stuff. This is what they wanted. They wanted an evil God doing evil things, drowning puppies and making people evil only to then hate them for being evil, like a fool. And that is what a fool would do. A fool makes something intentionally and then hates it for the way he made it. That is foolish, okay? And that's evil. So you got a lot of people that they don't really believe in anything anymore, and they can't because of, of books like this. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm spending time on this nonsense. These are the weeds that have literally just choked out any kind of life. When Jesus was here, it was completely new, it was fresh. He was talking about other stuff that the Jewish people had never even been talking about at the time. And they, even even in the, the, the Gospels, they, they mentioned that. <laughs> Nobody's ever, who is this man who's just speaking this stuff that, you know, where did he learn all this? Where did he, meaning he's talking about stuff they've never heard about before. Up until this point, it's just been this nonsense in Genesis and so on. Verse 13. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 600 years, bullcrap, bullcrap. <laughs> Real crap, bull crap. 600 years old the water had dried up from the earth Noah then removed the covering from the ark oh he had a covering do you know how oh wow that is a big old covering and saw the surface of the ground was dry by the 20 well then again so the ark was a lot harder to make than the covering somehow the, making a giant covering was amazing to me that he could make a giant covering when I'm thinking well the ship was about 100 times more amazing right by the verse 14 by the 27th day of the second month the earth was completely dry completely dry really completely dry or do you mean partly dry there's still lakes and oceans completely dry really okay i'm just taking you for what you chose the words you chose uh, uh teachers of the law pharisees all you people who killed jesus Verse 15, then uh, God said to Noah, come out of the ark and your wife and your sons and your wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, uh, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in it. All this, we got to replace all those puppies we murdered. So get to mating, okay? Verse 18, so Noah came out together with his sons and wives and his sons' wives all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all birds and all everything. You can just say everything came out of the ark, one kind after another. And then the lions were hungry, so they had, they had to eat something. So there goes the unicorn, like uh, Gary Larson would, would do in his Farside cartoon. What happened to the unicorn? And you just see the two lions like looking at each other. Verse 20, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, Satan, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. So, they are scarce on animals, and this clown is burning some of his own animals for God. Because remember, God loves killing innocent animals. He loves drowning puppies. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use the word. Got. I gotta get in the habit of using got. Okay. 
God loves drowning puppies. God loves sacrificing innocent animals and burning them on altars. He loves that stuff. He loves it so, man, Noah gets straight to business. Even though they are very, very low on animals. In fact, they don't even know how they're going to make it. He's straight to burning some of them. Just because verse 21, like, like uh, God has nostrils. The Lord Satan smelled with his nose the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans even though every inclination of the heart is of human heart is evil from childhood and never again will i destroy all living creatures as i have done okay what did jesus say that satan comes to steal kill and destroy here we have his own admission i will never again destroy all living creatures as i have done the god of stealing killing and destroying the god of death satan is saying this because he smelt some burnt lamb he was so happy with the, the smell of burnt lamb that he wanted to say, even though people are going to be evil, I'm never going to kill everybody again. Verse 22. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Wait a minute. Isn't it say in Revelation um, that that actually comes to an end? That the clouds cover the earth, that there's no more day? Um, and the, the, basically the sea, I mean, nuclear war would wreck the seasons too. So verse 22 is most likely going to be disproven as another lie. As long as the earth endures. Okay. Let's go to chapter. Let me see if my notes have anything that I've missed. Let's see Genesis eight. So for my notes, I put in Genesis eight, verse 21, this is literally false. All of the inclinations a human can have, all of them are not evil. How about Abel? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good point, old Daniel. Uh, or past Daniel. Very good point. He just gets done saying that all of the, what they're thinking is evil. But then later on, then there's people then that he says that they're not all of what they're thinking is evil. You know, uh, which one is it? Was was Abel also evil? Or just Cain? But Because one verse will say that they're, you know, they're all evil. Then the other verse he says that... <laughs> just, anyway... How about Abel? Wasn't he just uh, being uh, being pleasing to God? Or even Noah, who he just saved? Or Enoch, who pleased God enough to have him uh, take him to heaven? Question mark. Fact. Some inclinations of humans' heart are good, and others are bad. Yeah, I'm just making a point. that In a human being, it's a very mixed thing. That there's good inclinations, there's bad inclinations, but the Old Testament right here is saying, no, they're all bad inclinations. Genesis, I say, but Genesis says that all are bad when this is absurdly false. And you know, if we were made in God's image, dot, 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 that's right. If we were made in his image, then whose fault is it if all of our inclinations of our heart are bad? Whose fault is that? <laughs> the guy who designed the humans or the humans that were created? I mean, who, whose fault is that? 